the author knows what they're doing, that's fine. Yeah. And a lot of yeah. times it just confuses people if it doesn't. It's, uh, not. it's good because it shows you how well they can do different characters. Mm. That he, that she can do a woman who's scared. That she can do a killer who's mm -hmm. just trying to track this woman down to death. And then the inspector who's a little more clinical. Mm. So it's it's really quite good. And you get. I don't think Northern England is usually portrayed very much, and she does a good job of that. I think that's really, it's a nice area that's not often portrayed, so mm. there's also that yeah, as well. Yeah, that's great. I always forget for some reason that she is British, and I shouldn't because it's all she's ever, but she's, I don't know, and she, she writes this a universality to it. Yeah, that, yeah. <clears throat> yes, there could, this could be a balloon over in Nebraska <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> It could be. Balloons can go anywhere. They can. And there's no high wire tension wires. Oh, that's funny. Um, so, Jeff, you also brought something nonfiction. Another um, book. No, I didn't, actually. <laughs> that's in my head. I don't have a copy of the book. Um, well, it's in your head. I, yes, I do have a, a nonfiction book to talk about, but I don't have it because people keep reading it. So um, Imagine that. I don't have a copy to, to show. Um, it's, oh, and now I'm going to forget the name. The Last Castle. Um, it's by Denise Kiernan, who is much more famous for a book she wrote a couple years ago called The Girls of Atomic City. Which I read and thought was you, just so I, well done. I have not actually read yeah. that, but it was a fascinating story about, um, now I'm forgetting which town in Tennessee. Um, I can't think of the name of it either, but it's yeah, a small town it's, where they... It's yep. the town in Tennessee yeah. where... They created it just they to They created do. it essentially to have these um, these women who were... Um, basically working on the on the development of the atomic bomb, but without knowing that that's right. what they were doing. They were all com com compartmentalized. Yeah, everybody yes. was doing their own little thing without yeah. really understanding what 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 they were contributing to a, to the whole. So this is another book um, that she wrote um, that just came out this fall. It's been on the bestseller list for a few weeks now, um, and it's very very different. Um, except in her style of writing. It's about Biltmore House, which is in Asheville, oh, yeah. North Carolina. I've actually been there. Me too. And, yes, me too. And <laughs> Let's <it's>, go again. <laughs> yeah, we could do a, um, a reference book buzz on the, on the road. <laughs> yes, on definitely. Um, so Biltmore, of course, is known for being the largest private home in the country, and it was built by George Vanderbilt. There's so many Vanderbilts, I can't keep them straight. Um, so it's, it's basically a biography of the house. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it's kind of interesting because I, I wouldn't say I disliked. I, I enjoyed it very much. I felt I, was, I wanted a little bit more than I got out of it because as someone who's interested in architecture, I think I was kind of hoping for a little more about that. Um, but that would have made it a very different mm. book. So it's kind of a mix of the development of the house and also the social background of the family and what happens to them as they live in the house and what happens to it after he dies and his wife dies and, and so on, um, right up to the present where it's, it's now a remarkably successful museum because for a lot of historic homes like that, paying for themselves is actually very yeah. difficult. Oh, yes. Um, and the, the thing with Biltmore that's kind of interesting is that both when it was originally planned and the way it is now, it wasn't just a big house. It was designed to be a working community. So mm -hmm. they, they have a railroad that they, a special railroad spur that they built um, to bring the materials into this part of North Carolina in the mountains and uh, to build a village where the workers would, would live um, and a church where the people who were living to, you know, it was almost almost feudal in a sense, mm -hmm. where this enormous house, 250 rooms, was being built and it took years and so all of this, it, it, it was more than a construction site, it actually became a whole community. Whole community. Um, and the other, the other part that was, was important was forestry because this was in the Pisgah National Forest which is out kind of on the edge of the Smoky Mountains. Yeah. And Vanderbilt wanted very much to try to advance the study of forestry in the United States. Um, so he, I forget how many acres, it, it was hundreds of thousands of acres, um, much more than it, than it is now. And he brought in very well-known people to try to develop that and, and to make it a sustainable um, working concern that would, that would pay for itself. And that was, 
sort of successful and sort of not um, at different points in its history. So it, it goes into a lot of that. Don't, don't they have a vineyard now? That yes, they yeah. do. There's a vineyard. There's there's all kinds of stuff there. Um, it's actually. I did eat at the restaurant. Oh. There's restaurants. Where the, where the vineyard is. It was delicious. And, yeah. yeah, it was lovely. Um, so it's it, it's interesting to read about a particular corner of the yeah. Vanderbilt family, which was huge, of course. Yeah. Um, and he was kind of a bit of an outcast in the sense that he to build something like this in the middle of nowhere instead of the socialite yeah. life of Newport or... New York, which is where most of their lives were focused, um, he went off in a completely different direction um, and took all of his the family money and built this massive house in the middle of nowhere. So it, it was very different. And of course, two of the most famous people in the country worked with him on it, Richard Morris Hunt, who is one of the biggest architects in American history, um, and Frederick Law Olmsted, who is the equivalent for landscape design. And the gardens are stunning. Yeah, the yeah. gardens are amazing. I mean, I didn't even see a quarter of them. So um, because I just couldn't do yeah, it. They were you, just, oh, you see oh a my lot. Um, you 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 learn a lot about how the two of them um, advanced their careers through this yeah. project. Yeah. In, in fact, for both of them, this was one of the last projects in their careers. So it was kind of a culmination of the things that they had learned. Well, a lot of their land now is in trust to. Or, or part of the United States forest, isn't it? Um, yes. The park Some of it. They, they ended up having to <clears> sell <throat> a lot of it. Um, after George died, his widow, um, they, they were just, I mean, it, it was like a lot of enormous homes in Britain, too, where, yeah. you know, um, as matter. times change. Well, yeah, that's what it, it sounds like. A, 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 the institution a of the of income Downton tax. And, Downton Abbey. Yeah, I, actually, um, anyone who likes Downton Abbey, I think, would really, really enjoy this because it's an American version of that. Oh, sure. And seeing how the, the lifestyle changed from the 1890s when yeah. the house was built, going through World War I, um, when it was used to, um, the house was actually used for various purposes yeah. To, yeah. to help the war effort. Yeah. And then after that, when the income tax was instituted and yeah. the world changed. Yeah. So it was, it was a very different life for, for everybody. And so it's, it's interesting to see how that Well, that book that does, you know, a, document, a book like that will document the times and the social yeah. and the cultural and, they, and everything he, else. And they had all these famous people coming to visit, too, oh, writers yeah. and actors. Yeah. Sure. And yeah. They were a destination, for sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, to segue, um, you know, especially if you like to read about place, I'm gonna just, this is something a little different, though. Because this is An Unkindness of Magicians by Cat Howard, and it's a urban fantasy. We say urban because the place in question is New York City, which takes on a life of its own. You see New York City in a way that you never, ever thought of it, because this is the world where um, there is a, a hidden, magical people who really run their own world at the same time. And um, what fascinated me about this was that I, I love books about magic, and I love books about magic that the metaphor is obvious, but also very, very clever. And this is, because it's about power and how you yeah. wield power. Um, and this is about a young woman who, it's basically, she's, she's come back to get some revenge. So every couple of years, and actually it could be 10 or 20 or 30, but in this case it's 13, the great houses, there's a house, there's a Merlin house, there's a Prospero house. She uses a lot of these names that will make you smile as you read them. They, have, they do something called the turning, which is basically they have a magical event where they all compete to get the power and be the top house. They get ranked. You can create your house during this period of time. It's fascinating because it's this political thing that she's made up that makes so much sense. And she is hired by this house who wants to become a house and decides, well, I think, you know, I, I would, I'll be your magician. So you don't know where she came from. You don't know why she has the power she has. And it's all about what happens. And I don't like to give too much of this away because it really is a page turner. Um, and it's one of those books where you're like, it's a I very just read it and I couldn't stop oh. turning the pages. Like, okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> and Do they have interact to go to sleep? a lot with, with real world? Yes. Or is, oh, yes. So it, in, in a very, it's, a mix it's, of both. it's interesting because they refer to that a lot. They don't call them muggles, but that's what they <laughs> But they call them mundane. But they call them mundane, mundanes, exactly. Yeah. And they go back and forth about how well she, in fact, she does this amazing thing to, to um, 
it's sort of her uh, her trial to see if he'll hire her to be his magician in the in the um, contests. And she, they talk about the traffic of New York City, and it's just this astonishing. Her use of language is amazing. Yeah. It's a really beautifully written book. I also think that it was a brave ending and one I did not anticipate. Mm. And it made perfect sense once I thought about yeah. it. But at the time it ends, you're like, no! Um, it was really wonderful. <laughs> and um, the reason I picked it up was basically because I haven't read a fantasy in a while, and this really appealed to me when I was reading a review. And I thought, you know, let's do something different. Um, and I'm, I'm really glad I did. Mm. Um, it was, yeah. Is it a series or just? I don't think so. She could turn this into a series, but I think it would be very difficult, that, and I don't know that she really wants to. Yeah, I don't know that she could do make it into a series. Yeah. Un unless she went a totally a different character in the story. In the same world. Yeah. 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 Which she could. Yeah. But I mean, it's, just, it's the usual could. things. Families all have people that they disown. This is happening in this world. This, really, and there's mm. some humor. Um, yeah. And um, some romance, uh, but one of the things I would want to really warn people about is that it's very graphic in a way yeah. that is difficult for me to explain because she talks about um, certain things that happen to people while they're doing their magic that is really um, disturbing. Disturbing. Yeah, disturbing is a good word for it, but it's in context and it makes perfect sense. So, you know. So I would say that the unkindness of magicians was something different, and I really thoroughly enjoyed it. And I was glad to hear that you thought it was a page turner, yeah. because I thought it was just one of those, you know, I was like, yeah, yeah. but to have someone else tell me that. I kept on having to, got to turn off the light. Right. <laughs> got to go walk the dog. Got right. to go. <laughs> there was, there was I don't much want more to. I want do. to keep reading it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and we don't have too much time left, Beth, but is there another book you wanted to mention? Uh, well, I would just like to mention uh, The Zigzag Girls by um, Ellie Griffith. And she has another series that people really enjoy. I can't remember the name of that series. Uh, yes. Ruth Galloway. Ruth Galloway. Um, this is a new series for her, and it takes place after World War II in the 1950s. So everybody's recovering from the war. And it follows a policeman, and he used to work with uh, the mat, what was called the Magic Men, and they were in charge of creating illusions during World War II, like making the Germans think that there was a whole field of tanks that could come and oh, attack yeah. them. Okay. And so he gets together with one of the one of those men to try to solve mysteries. Um, and in this one, people are dying through magic tricks. It's, it's, there's no real magic in it, it's all right. magic tricks. It's vaudevillian, mm -hmm. yeah. It's vaudevillian, right. So it was really, it's fun, and I, and I hear that it gets better with each iteration, with each one, so. Mm. It's exactly yeah. uh, Ruth Galloway is a lot, I think it's, it's uh, she writes a, <coughs> about a forensic anthropologist. Yeah, so it's very it's different. it's a little darker, um, but that has some humor in it that you don't expect. Did you find that in this? This has some humor in it too, yes, and, and the other, the, the policeman's kind of straight, but the magician that he hooks up with is this debonair, charming man, which is, he's really fun to, to read. Yeah. Um, Jackie, our assistant director, really likes this series. Yeah, yeah. And she said that it has gotten better as, as, yeah. as time go, goes yeah. on. That's true. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us for, for, the, for the BB Buzz. And um, we, we will make sure that all these titles are listed in the credits so that you can figure out what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So come to the library and talk to us about books. Thank you. Mm -hmm.